I ran against Donald Trump. Terry is running against an acolyte of Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump? Donald Trump and Trump and Trump and Trump. Not a Trump rally. We let him holler. No, he doesn't want to talk about Trump anymore. Well, I do. Who's on the ticket, Joe? President Biden mentioning the former president about two dozen times while campaigning for Terry McAuliffe in Virginia. Joining me now is Charlie Hurt, the Washington Times opinion editor, a Fox Business contributor, a Virginia native. Charlie, first re reason Biden talked about Trump so much is because there is literally nothing else that Biden and McAuliffe can talk about. <laughs> no, not one yeah. issue that is in McAuliffe's favor. All of them go for Yunkin. Yeah, no, it's a it's a bad environment. They're definitely getting desperate. But I have to you got to give Biden props for at least admitting that uh, all he really wants to talk about is Donald Trump here in Virginia. Uh, and uh, you're exactly right. Uh, what you know, whether it's education or the economy, uh, it's it, these are these are rough times. And, and you know, we're, we get used to listening to all of these hotly negative, scary TV ads uh, during this never ending political cycle. But I have to say, the idea that Glenn Youngkin is some kind of domestic terrorist in a fleece vest has got to be probably the most hysterical, uh, negative, false, fake uh, campaign gambit well, I've ever heard. And, it's, and, and it really does underscore just how desperate these people are. Well, let me play that for the audience. Take a listen. Virginia, for the sake of your families and the country, we can't let this happen here in Virginia. Extremism can come in many forms. It can come in the rage of a mob driven to, assault, driven to assault the Capitol. It can come in a smile and a fleece vest. What a uniner he is, right? Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. This was the guy, this was the unoffensive Uncle Joe that everybody was going to like. And honestly, I actually thought that it would, you know, a year ago, I thought that if, if uh, Joe Biden wound, wound up in the White House, it would be very, very difficult to, uh, to sort of smear him for Republicans to portray him as somebody that people didn't like anymore. But man, Joe Biden is doing what Republicans were, would, were never able to do. He has really turned so divisive and so nasty. And he says things like this. And I really do think that it, 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 he is trading away all of the goodwill, all of the, all of the sort of good feeling that so many independents mm -hmm. had towards him, who maybe kind of felt sorry for him because he seems to be out of touch most of the time. But this is gonna, this is gonna turn into real hot anger. And I think we're gonna see yeah. it in Virginia next week. And I think we're gonna see it in the midterms next year. Issue number one is education. Here's what uh, Terry McAuliffe told a reporter from CBS today. The reporter asked him, if you win, how are you going to work with those parents who have concerns about how things are being taught in schools? Terry McAuliffe said, this is all generated by Glenn Youngkin. One, I, I think that people in Virginia can thank Terry McAuliffe for screwing up and telling them the truth. Uh, when he said, yeah. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. As the Wall Street Journal editorial page wrote today, McAuliffe said in public what he tells teachers unions in private. Right. But this is a huge albatross for him because he's been, he was the governor before, and he vetoed three school choice bills. He was the governor when the Department of Education started pushing critical race theory onto the public schools in that state. And he's tried, again, he's got nowhere to go with this. Yeah, and, and this whole idea that this is something that's been made up by Glenn Youngkin is such an insult to all of those parents that you see who are going to school board meetings who are genuinely concerned about all of this. And I think the Wall Street Journal is exactly right. You know, the definition of a scandal is when a politician accidentally slips up and says what they actually mean. And uh, I think that when you, when you compare uh, Terry McAuliffe's record to what he said, what, what he accidentally uh, spoke truthfully during that debate, it lines up pretty neatly. And of course, you're exactly right. You know, uh, you know, it, it, Here's the problem for a, a, a big problem for the Terry for Terry McAuliffe. He has a record, and people can look at it. Glenn Youngkin uh, has has called him out on that record, and he's done a very good job of it. And uh, I think that he has done a good job of defining this race entirely about whether or not parents 
should have a say in their children's education. And it is a winning campaign. And I think that's why we're going to see what we see next week. None of these politicians who showed up for McAuliffe have helped uh, it, more than more than Joe Biden, but what Barack Obama said earlier this week on the I think that it had it was on the very in the very week that that uh, young boy in Loudoun yeah. County was convicted of sexually assaulting or raping that young woman at least found guilty by a judge and he was mocking the parents' concerns as yeah. fake outrage, essentially telling them what's actually happening isn't happening. And it, it's just vile. And before, we, and I want to add to this, in terms of other issues, the economy is up there. If it's not number one, it's second or third. And Glenn Youngkin is, has it's been running on repealing the state grocery tax. Again, that adds to inflation. Then huge, suspending the recent gas issue. tax hike. Again, eases inflation. Yeah, those are huge winning issues. And I, I was really startled by Obama's uh, appearance in, in Richmond last week. Um, you, know, you know, when you think about how on point Barack Obama was in 2008, and then, and then you listen to how completely out of touch he is now, it's pretty startling to mm -hmm. think about that. Before we go, look at this video. I don't know if, if you have a return, but this was Joe Biden last night. Yeah. No mask, crowd full of folks. Just hugging up on people. You, you, people were wild. Here's my. You, you and I would have been arrested for this. Yeah, exactly. Certainly, if it was here in New York City, I would be. I just want to add one thing, though. My headline from that video: COVID's over. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He solved it. Great. Thank you. Yeah. At the same time, we're going to talk about it later in the hour about McAuliffe lying about the COVID numbers for kids. I... Yeah. No, it's it's uh, and, and it's kind of amazing that that um, that that McAuliffe has so screwed things up and Biden has so screwed things up that we're not that, that this is really I don't even think of top tier issue in Virginia right now. As you point out, it's all about the economy and it's all about education and nothing could be more devastating for Democrats mm -hmm. than talking about education and the economy. Even former Governor Doug Wilder, the first black governor in history. It came and he does not have I mean he's being very kind but he doesn't have a whole lot to say that's uplifting about Terry McAuliffe he, <laughs> no he doesn't he all but endorsed Glenn Youngkin he all but amazing. endorsed I know uh, in a very gentlemanly way Doug Wilder is not for Terry McAuliffe a true Virginia gentleman <laughs> he is Charlie Hart you as well my friend you as well I'll, I'll be down in those parts shortly. Can't wait to see you. 